and number eight, which is related. Probably should have placed it earlier because it related to the medics. <laughs> but it's roster and classes. It's got to go back to being a platoon of different classes. So you get 40 soldiers or however many it's going to be. I think 40 makes sense, especially considering you're going to be able to take 12 people out on missions. Each class is going to have a different number of soldiers, and when a soldier in that class dies, they'll get replaced by another soldier of that class. And each of the classes has specialties for attributes. So, like, the medics are going to be good at medical stuff, and, you know, it demo guy or whatever, an engineer is going to be good at the demolition, electronics, that sort of stuff. And they'll have perks too, so little bonuses that make them unique, like a medic being the only person who can heal someone up to 100%. And each soldier has a random bonus as well, or has multiple random bonuses. Could be something like... You know, for every five headshots, this guy will get an extra 100 XP. Or it could even be something like, uh, this guy's better at looting bodies. I don't know. I'm sure there's plenty that come up with. And there shouldn't be females or other social justice crap. Because it should be a realistic game. Because that's what Tom Clancy was about. Yeah, it just looks really stupid when there's females around. <laughs> That's not realistic at all. You can point to the one supposed special forces woman there's been in history in the Vietnam War, and I can point to how everyone says she didn't actually pass the test and it was just a political stunt. And then uh, you can not put that crap in your game. That'd be cool. Don't need to know that some guy's a homosexual or whatever else you're trying to throw in there, because that's the kind of stuff that will make me not buy the game. I don't need to know about their orientation or their gender. They should be all be heterosexual men, really, but I don't need to know it. Just keep it closed. Number nine is sound, so AI-generated voices would be interesting because the platoon of 40 soldiers, if you do AI-generated, then it can be a lot more variety than having 10 voice actors doing some voices or they could just go that way, have 10 voice actors, do 5 voices apiece, and now you got 50 voices. They can also, uh, you know, play with the pitch and the speed, that sort of thing. So they can reuse one recording to get multiple characters out of it. More importantly, bullet impacts, bullets hitting objects needs to have uh, better sounds, whizzes and cracks, so... If a bullet's subsonic, it's going to whiz past you, and, you know, if it's close enough, you'll hear, you'll hear the whiz. Or if it's supersonic, you'll hear the crack. Gunshots need to be better. Some of the guns, I guess, Breakpoint added a few guns. One of the shotguns, I think, sounded good, but for the most part, the gunshots were crap. And there should be uh, echoes, reverb off mountains, and stuff that actually... The environment will change the sounds because this is a AAA game, so focus less on graphics and more on stuff that matters, like sound. You should hear some equipment moving around when you're walking. You should hear footsteps. I mean, those giant armored guys didn't have any footsteps from what I remember. And the enemies shouldn't be shouting either. I also remember that. All the enemies are loud, and then uh, they don't hear your engines, but you can hear them talking from 200 meters away. And they don't hear you land a helicopter from 50 meters away. Or your gunshots. I mean, you don't even need to have suppressed gunfire for them to not hear it at 100 meters. It's absolutely absurd. Which is something I should have included in the... I mean, I said detection, but I was thinking more of visual. Should have mentioned audio detection for number one. It needs to be at a longer distance. So there should be animals. They finally added animal sounds to Breakpoint, made the game sound a lot better, but there should be a lot more animal sounds. The uh, wind, should hear some wind. There was a wind effect when you're driving a car, I think, but it was pretty weak from what I remember. But there should be wind in your ears when you're on foot, too. And, you know, if you're running, there's more wind in your ears. You should hear a heartbeat, let you know you're getting tired, so you don't need to have the stamina bar up in case you want to play without a hood. You know, as you get tired, you start to hear a heartbeat. 
the briefings also. There needs to be some good briefings. It's one of the good things in the first game. Those briefings were cool. I liked listening to those. And number 10 is going to be player control. Which is something that was severely lacking and is necessary in a tactical shooter. It's going to be stuff such as leaning, and I mean manual leaning, not the avatar moving on me when I'm trying to take a shot and then he decides to lean because I'm close enough to a wall that it automatically leans. Rolling, and I don't mean the rolling that's in the game, I'm talking about when you're prone and you hit the lean key, or maybe you, you double tap the lean key and then you do a roll if you don't have a backpack on, and if you have a backpack on you can't roll, that sort of thing, realism. Should be some incremental stances so that you can, uh, at least on PC, which is another thing. PC should be different than the console version. Should have a lot more options for controlling the avatar, such as the incremental stances. So you could maybe take a step out to the right, take another step out to get a little farther out, or, you know, stand up a little higher, stand on your tippy toes, crouch down, crouch a little lower, that sort of thing. Uh, shoulder swapping. It's one of the things that Breakpoint did well. I can't remember how well it was done in Wildlands, but uh, I remember it being good in Breakpoint. Although I think it could be improved, because I'm pretty sure when you reload it swaps shoulders back. I guess that's not a big deal, but there's certainly room for improvement, I'm sure. Uh, free look. That's a, another huge thing. In Wildlands, there's no free look, and then in Breakpoint, there's only free look, unless you aim down sights. Uh, but it should be a toggle, so when you want to only move your head around, you can only move your head around. And if you want to move your body, then you toggle free look off, and you move your body when you turn. And uh, speaking of free look, the uh, strafe keys should become turn keys when you're free looking just feels a lot better. You can actually make your avatar turn instead of needing to strafe and then stop free looking so you can turn. That sort of thing is very bad. We need more player control. There should be sprinting while prone and crouched. It's another huge thing that was missing. So if you're prone and you're you just want to move faster because you want to get out of there sooner, you hit sprint. But uh, just forces you to stand up and start sprinting. And it should have varied speeds. So prone should have a walk speed and a sprint speed, as well as the default speed. Same thing for crouched. And then I have stop, look, listen, smell, SLLS, sills, because uh, that would be a cool feature to have. Sort of a replacement for the compass in Ghost Recon 1, where you have the yellow bars when they're kind of close, and then you have the red circle in the center when they're very close. So I think that would be a cool function for uh, the game. When you press that, your guy, you know, he can only do it while you're stationary, obviously. Stop. And then look, you know, you do that yourself. You have to look around, but maybe there's a... Maybe while you're in this particular function, it'll zoom in your sights a little bit. Sort of suggest that you're focused. Maybe it blurs the peripheral vision with the centers zoomed in. Or I don't know what else it could do, but uh, listen, obviously, they get a... Uh, do a sort of comtac thing, electric earmuff thing, where certain sounds become louder, all other sounds become softer, and smell is where the thing is really supposed to shine. You know, maybe it'll have a, maybe it'll have your avatar say something, or maybe it just says it on your screen, or maybe it just has some sort of icon flash. I don't know to let you know that you smell deodorant, or you smell human bio, or you smell shampoo, or whatever else you might be smelling. You smell some leather, new car smell, that sort of thing. Just to give you an idea that you're next to you're pretty close to people, so that you don't have to use third person cameras to look around walls. I guess that's enough. I've been speaking for a long time. <laughs> Very long time. This is going to be multiple videos for sure. Okay, this is Future J. I've come back from editing the bonus video and I realized there's some things that I forgot. First of all, in the customization part, I touched on almost nothing. I basically just said you can better customize your weapons. But I also wanted to include that you could change the types of pouches on this and Maybe changing the positions of the pouches can affect how quickly you can equip something. It's not so much about the patches on uniforms or other cosmetic changes, but just stuff that affects gameplay. 
I also wanted to mention the volume of different elements such as gunshots, footsteps, the radio dialogue, local dialogue, engines, tracks, tires, weapon handling, wind. So they gotta have sliders for all these different oral elements and they could also have sliders for groups. So have a group for the vehicles if you just want to change everything vehicle related at once instead of needing to change the tires, tracks, tire, uh, engines, whatever. I also wanted to mention customization for enemy accuracy and their tactics, their aggression, the effectiveness such as reload speed and how well they're able to suppress their numbers, vehicle support, that sort of thing. And the same thing goes for the ghosts and the blue four independent forces such as rebels or whatever other armies there are in the games. And the customization also includes the FOV binding combinations of keys. So if you want to have a function that's activated by pressing tab and Q at the same time, you can do that, or three different keys at the same time, or also having double taps and triple taps as binds. And then the other thing that I didn't mention at all is randomness, because that's one thing that the older games really needed more of. Ghost Recon has not much of it at all, and then Rainbow Six Three has some, but it could definitely use more, it would definitely benefit from more. The randomness I'm talking about is spawn locations of enemies, objectives, caches, vehicles, civilians, prisoners, maybe even entire buildings or rooms of the buildings rearranged, or makeshift buildings like tents and stuff. It also includes enemy numbers, the camping spots, the hiding spots, patrol paths, aggressiveness, their skill levels, that sort of thing. Having many different spawn locations also makes it harder to memorize the levels to the point where it's almost impossible and it forces the player to be more tactical and increases the challenge. It also adds replayability and watchability. They could also have randomness to the timing of events and also weather and time of day. And related to all of this, there should be uh, there should be options for reloading missions versus restarting missions. So if you reload a mission, it generates a new seed, so everything's randomly selected again. Or if you restart the mission, it keeps the same seed, so you get to retry that particular seed. 